When I was growing up, oh goody, Andy's going to get nostalgic. There was a book I really liked. And if you've not read the book, you've probably seen the movies. And they're J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. And I hear as I am doing this lesson series that they are going to do The Hobbit. And I'll be one of the first in line to see it because they were great movies. And the books are really good too. But what I'm getting to is there was an expression. They were about to take a shortcut. I think it was Sam that said, Shortcuts make for long delays. They may make long delays in Middle Earth, but not in Lightroom. What I want to show you is a couple of what I think are the more important interface shortcuts. Now, by interface, I mean just what we're looking at. There are hundreds of shortcuts in this program, and we'll look at other shortcuts as we move along. But there's a few, I think, that can really help you out, especially in the library module. Now, one of them is kind of obvious. We are in the library module, and I do have a bunch of images up. I can use my left and right arrow keys to choose the image that I want to work on. That's a pretty obvious one. The next two I want to show you are the letters G and E on your keyboards. If you press the letter E on your keyboard, you will go into full screen mode on the image you had selected. And if you press the letter G on your keyboard, you will go right back into grid view. So we can either go full display or grid view with the G and the E keys. I think those can help you out. Now, as to everything else going on on the screen, let's say, for example, that I'm running out of room. I'm working on one of my images, and I'm going to press the letter E to get to it. And I want to make the image a little bit bigger. And in doing so, I want to get rid of some of the stuff I don't want to be using. Now, those are the function keys, F. Think 5, 6, 7, and 8. Top, bottom, left, right. If I press function key F5, I'll lose my top area. I don't need it now. It gives me a little bit more room to work. I press F5 again, it comes back. If I press F6, I lose the film strip area, but again, do I really need it right now? If I press F7, I lose the left, and if I press F8, I lose the right. You say, well, what if I just want to lose everything for a minute. It's the same keys used in other Adobe products. Press the tab key and watch what happens. Basically, you lose what's on the left and the right. So if you have some room, the image will expand. Press tab again, it comes back. But if you hold the shift key down and press the tab key, you lose everything. This is a great way to show your clients a photograph without the distraction of everything else going on in the Lightroom screen. I can press shift and tab again, and it will come right back. Now, what's left? Because we're not done. I want to mark this image. I want you to think of the letters on your keyboard, P-U-X. Poor Uncle Xavier, P-U-X. This area down here allows me to flag an image. If I press the letter P, I'm flagging it as a pick. In other words, I want this one. I want to make sure I've got that one. If I press the letter X, I change that to rejected. If I press the letter U, I remove the flags altogether. Now next to that, over here, we've got some stars. And those stars are how much we rate this particular image. It's a rating system that actually is universal throughout all the Adobe products. And you go from 1 to 5. Start by pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's pretty easy. If you want to get rid of the rating altogether, press zero, and it will turn them off. Next to the rating are some colors, so we can color code these images. If, for example, you want to use the color red, red is for photographs of lampshades. I always use that for that. Press the number six on your keyboard. Seven, eight, nine, you get it. If I want to use red, I can press the number six, but if I don't want to use red again and I don't want another color, I can press 6 again to remove it. Now, there might be a time where you want to get rid of this area completely down here. Press the letter T on your keyboard, and it will temporarily go away. And if you press T again, it will come back. How you set up the Lightroom interface is really dependent on what you're doing and how you're working. Some people never use the film strip, some do. All of these things are here to help us out. Now, like I said, there are hundreds in hundreds of keys that are defined as shortcut keys. In Lightroom, shortcuts don't make for long delays. Now we're not done. I want to show you one or two more. 
This is a toggle switch. Press the letter F one time on your keyboard. Now watch the top of my screen right up here, this area. I don't really need it that much, and some of the stuff starts going away. Press F again. You even lose your pull-down menus. Press F again, and everything comes back. Go over to the letter L on your keyboard and press the letter L one time. What happens is it dims out the screen. Now you can change how the dimming goes in preferences. If you press L again, it puts the whole thing out for you. Now watch this. And if I press L again, it's called lights out. It basically does that. Now why am I doing that? Well, number one, maybe I really want to focus on that image and I really want to look at it. You can still work over here. Believe it or not, this stuff still works. It's just kind of hard to see. Well, there you go. Those are just some of the shortcut keys that you can use in a program that has hundreds, but they can save you time, and let me give you the incentive. Studies show that using shortcuts can save you one hour out of every eight hours that you work on a computer. On to the next.